Okay, welcome back. Week seven, Fusion Mondays. Today we're going to talk about how to use the holes feature. So let's get right to it. Holes is what we're covering. Um, we're going to do a variety of different holes. The reason why we do a ton of different holes is because, for the most part, holes are used to put bolts or fasteners through. And as you can see here, there are lots of dis different fasteners. So, because there's lots of different fasteners, there's lots of different hole types we got to create. So, let's get over to Fusion. So, the first thing we're going to do is create a block that's seven inches long, one inch thick, and two inches wide. And then we're going to draw a construction line right down the center. So we can set up a one inch pattern of points for each of our holes. So let's get over to it. So first we're gonna start with a sketch. Uh, zoom to fit. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, we're gonna select the top plane. We're gonna make a rectangle. Center justified is always what I like. And it's gonna be uh, two inches wide and seven inches long. And we're going to extrude this to one inch thick and we will zoom to fit so we have it out. Now we're going to do a second sketch on the top surface with the line for construction from this midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line. And now we are going to put a point because the hole command really likes points so we can select where the center of the hole goes. Um, on here, and then I'm going to dimension that from the edge to be one inch. Now we are then going to pattern this point, create a rectangular pattern of that point down this line um, at spacings of one inch, and we want six of them because we're going to do six different styles of holes. Um, this has all been repetitive. Um, we learned all this in previous Fusion Mondays, so none of this should have been new. So um, we're going to hit Finish Sketch, and now we are going to do our first hole. Now, unfortunately, this is going to require us to jump back and forth between this image and Fusion a lot, so we'll see what we can do. So the first hole is just a straightforward hole. Understand holes are typically made with drill bits, so if you notice, the bottoms of the holes are rarely flat. This is important because um, if you make a flat bottom hole, then it's gotta be manufactured a different way at a higher cost versus just drilling it. So holes, the feature within Fusion, will automatically put in this tip angle at the bottom so that in your designs you can account for that in case you punch through the bottom side when you really don't want to or something like that. So this one we're making a half inch deep hole or half inch diameter hole uh, three quarters of an inch deep and that means at that is before the tip so it's three quarters of an inch deep and then we add the tip so um, we need to keep that in mind so um, let's go ahead and go over to holes that's how we read this this symbol is diameter and that means half inch diameter and this down arrow means the depth so in fusion we would go to holes we're going to click on the first point and then we're going to go through this thing. We're doing a regular simple hole. We are, uh, there's no internal features to the hole. It is a drill depth. Its depth, if we remember from the arrow down, was going to be 0.75. Its diameter was going to be 0.5. And then this tip angle, they do change, but almost all drills, at least in the high school shop, are 118 degrees uh, tip angle. For different materials, um, they, the tip angles change. But the kind of universal one that'll work in everything is 118 degrees. So you're rarely going to be asked to change that. And we go ahead and click OK. Now, we can see down there that the hole goes away. <clears throat> How do we slice this in half to get this view? So something else new we're covering today, which is um, Analyze. So we can go under Inspect and click on uh, Section Analysis. And we can either click on a surface of the part or a plane. We're going to click on a plane this time. And you click OK, and you'll notice that we now have Analyze here, and we can now cut the part in half easily. If we turn off the eyelet, now it goes back to the full part. This allows us to slice and look on the inside. So now we need to put in the other holes. The problem is 
the little points disappeared. They're, they didn't disappear. They're just not being shown. I guess that means they disappeared. Um, so we go ahead into sketch and we turn on sketch two. And now the holes are back or the points are back. So we can do hole again and select the second hole. Now, um, that hole is a what's called a counterboard hole. So it is a shorter hole followed by a hole all the way through. This is so that this type of screw, which is a cap head screw or an Allen head screw, there's lots of names for it, can sit down inside the hole and the top of the screw is flush with the top surface. So it sits down inside this groove. So this requires a little more analysis. First off, this symbol, this kind of elongated U shape indicates it's a counter um, board screw. And then everything after it has to do with the counter bore and everything before it has to do with the hole that goes, in this case, all the way through. So it's going to be a 0.38 through hole, meaning it goes all the way through. And then a capped head uh, added to it at 0.6 diameter. That means the diameter of this shape is 0.6 and the depth is 0.4. So back over in Fusion, we're going to make sure we use a counter bore symbol. It's still straight. The distance is going to be all, which is the same as through. So if we come down to the diameter at the bottom, we know that that was 0.38. Well, 0.38. The cap at the top is a diameter of 0.6, and the depth was the arrow down port and was 0.4. And if we turn on the analysis, we get that shape. Okay. The next hole, we're going to click here and click on this, is going to be a counter sunk hole. Because if we flip over here, this one has a V shape. And notice the V shape symbol, that enters counter sink. It's read the same way. This is the hole that goes all the way through. And this is the details about the counter sink. It is a diameter at the very top of point. Uh, 6, 8, and the angle is 82. I'll give you 82 is almost always the angle. And then the hole that goes all the way through is 0 0.31 in diameter, and it goes all the way through. So here we go. Um, the distance all the way through is 0 0.31. The uh, angle was 82. The distance at the top was 0 0.68, and the distance was all. And we click OK, and we can see now that we have our counter sunk hole. Okay, these are very common counter sunk uh, and counter bore, and then obviously a straight hole. The next three are all to do with threads. So on a bolt, you have uh, external threads, and those screw into internal threads, which are in inside a hole. So these are external threads, and then we have internal threads. The thread sizes go on for days, including metrics. We're going to talk about how to pick both of them. But in order to make these screw together correctly, we have to make uh, tapped holes, which is this information here. We're going to make threads on the inside, and that's called a tapped hole. Now, our first one is going to be a metric. So this first part tells you information about how to prepare the hole for threading. So we would use a 0.87 millimeter drill to 15 millimeters deep, and then we would come back with a 10 millimeter by 1.5 tap and tap the hole. In Fusion, all we really know is need to know is this M10 by 1.5 and the depth. So that's the only really two pieces of information. Fusion will automatically figure out this 8.7 mm stuff. So let's go over to Fusion. Let's go hole again. Now we are going to use a straight hole. On this second row, we have to use tapped. See the little threads. And that's going to bring, and we got to select the place. And that's going to bring up a whole litany of uh, information here that we have to go through. The first thing we know is that it's 15 millimeters deep. Now I could do the conversion or I can type in 15 mm. And Fusion will do the conversion for us. Now, uh, we saw that M at the beginning. Uh, UST or universal thread, uh, universal screw thread is US, Amer you know, not Europe, not metric. If you look at ANSI, 
metric is what we're going to need. Second thing we're going to choose is the size, which if we look at the thing, the size is a 10 millimeter. So if we go back over to Fusion, we're going to come down here to a 10 millimeter size. And you'll notice it immediately goes 10 by 1.5, uh, 6H. That is what is written uh, right here. Oh, sorry, where is it? 10 millimeter by 6 by 61H. So that's the proper size we have. And we can just go ahead and click OK. And if we turn on analysis, we can see that it put threads in there. Now, many these are helical threads. It doesn't show that. It just shows a graphic representation of the thread on the inside of the hole. That is for computing power reasons. If you had it do these complex mathematical geometry, every threaded hole you put in, you quickly make a huge file that's taking up a whole bunch of memory to do simple threads. So it simplifies the process by just slapping a generic image in there that looks like threaded and notes that, hey, this is a threaded hole for later. If you actually want threaded holes, actual geometry to show up, we're going to show that in the next one. So we are going to go ahead and click on hole again and click here. Now on this one, it says that it's going to be a 0.31 hole drilled all the way through at one inch and it is a 3 8 16 UNC thread 1B, but there's also a countersink applied to the top at 39 by 82. So we're stacking a whole bunch of information in here. So let's just break it down to the basics first. We're gonna start with getting the proper thread all the way through. So we are gonna switch from metric back to ANSI UST. And we are going to go to size. And here's where we have to do a little bit of conversion. I know that 3 8 is 0.375. Because you can divide 3, or, or sorry, 8 by 3, and that will give you 0.375. You just have to learn the numbers. Because it does not put the fractions here. It puts the decimal equivalent. So 0.375 is 3 8. And if you notice, it says 3 8 16 1 B. That's what we wanted. Um, let's jump back over and take a look. We wanted a counter sink. Basically, there's a small counter sink at the top to help line up the screw and get started a little bit easier. So that counter sink is uh, 0.39 at 82 degrees. So if we come back over to Fusion, we put on the counter sink. We could just add the 0.39 to the top, and you'll notice it has a little tiny counter sink at 82 degrees and we could change this distance to all or we could put it in as one inch. Now the last thing is we want to model these. We don't want it to be a graphic. We want it to actually be a model showing the actual geometry of the thread. If we click on modeled, that's what it'll do. So if I turn on analysis and we take another look at the inside, you can notice this one's a graphic and this one is the actual like geometrics of that thread and you'll notice it goes all the way through and it has the little countersink at the top to help the screw kind of line up and guide itself in okay one to go um this one is uh going to be another hole here let's turn off analysis oops and let's flip back over and look at the numbers so the numbers are a 1024 unc uh, 2B. So normally it's written in a fraction, but when you get in, the, this is where the U.S. system is screwy. When you get below um, a quarter of an inch, it switches to what's called a numbering system. So you're looking for the hashtag. When it just gives you a number, when you go into Fusion, you're looking for the hashtag. So this one has a lot of complex stuff. So what we're doing here is you cannot tap conventionally with a conventional tap to the bottom of a hole effectively. Little chips can fall at the bottom of the hole, and when you run the tap in behind it, those chips can cause the tap to break. So typically, you drill a hole deeper than you need it to be tapped, and you tap it shorter than the bottom. So you can see this 10 millimeter hole is actually done in a way that would be very challenging to make with conventional tools. There are ways to make it, but with a conventional tap. This is a much more realistic tapped hole. Holes drilled a little bit deeper and the threads uh, 
go to the depth we need, but there's a little bit of space at the bottom to accommodate the tap. Plus, there's some complexities about tap design and taps can't always reach to the very last hole thread. But anyways, I'm, I'm digressed. So there's a lot of information here. And what this one, I'm sorry, this one, what it's saying is we are making a hole that's 0.75 deep, but we are only tapping 0.6 of the 0.75 hole. And then we're also adding a countersink. So let's first get the tapped hole, the right size to the right depth. So we're looking for hashtag 1024. So first off, let's go ahead and make the right depth. The depth here is 0.75. Um, the size, we are looking for hashtag 10. So 10, and you notice 1024 2B, that's all correct. Um, now what we need to do is offset threads here. And what this will do is it gives us another window in this already cluttered screen that sets us up. Let's actually go to straight threads now. It sets us up for how much do we want to offset at the beginning? Well, we're not going to do any. It's how deep do we want it to go? We want it to go 0.6. Okay. Now the next step is, and by the way, we're not going to do models on this one. The next step is we need to do a counter sink on the top. So if we then go back over to Fusion, we have a counter sink that is 0.2 at 90 degrees. So 82 degrees is the most common. 90 is kind of the second most common. Um, so we come back over here. We're going to change this to uh, 0.2. And we are going to change uh, this angle to 90. And I press Enter. And if we look at the inside of this, we can see that the hole has a countersink. It only goes to the bottom here, or does not go to the bottom here. And there's some space for chips and uh, the tip of the tap to go in a little bit deeper to give us the full tap. When you go all the way through, it doesn't really matter because if any chips fall, they're going to fall through the bottom. And also the tap can go all the way past the bottom to make sure you cut every single thread. So there's holes. Um, I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.